when I want to calculate conditional probability, whenever, whenever I have a question of my probability, I will always see the words given that in there. And when you see given that in the question, it means that you're going to use this conditional probability formula. So the formula that we use for conditional probability, we represent it with a straight line. So we say, if I say, find the probability of A given that B. Okay, so I can say A given that I want B. I'm going to say I want the probability of A. And when I say given that, I put a straight line down for B. So I want the probability that I found A given that B. And when we do that, the first thing we get is we find the probability of getting A and B together. So we can have A and B. And then we have to divide it by just the probability of the given that thing. So we divide it by the probability of just getting the thing that we said given that. So we said given that B. So we say probability of just B. So you always take both together divided by just the one where we said given that. So if we look at an example, I have Jody tosses a biased coin and throws two fair tetrahedral dice. The probability that the coin shows a head is one over three. And each of the dice has four faces numbered one, two, three, and four. Jody's score is calculated from the numbers on the faces that the dice lands on as follows. If the coin shows a head, the two numbers from the dice are added together. If the coin shows a tail, the two numbers from the dice are multiplied together. And they want us to find the probability that the coin shows a head given that Jody's score is eight. So we want the probability that we've got a head, given that we've got a score of eight. So remember we draw a straight line for the given that. And what that's going to mean is, I want the probability of the one thing and the other. So head and an eight, divided by just the given that thing. So the given that was the score of eight. So that's the probability that she has a score of eight. So now I can work out each of these things and then divide them. So let's start with heads and just getting an eight. So she wants the probability of heads and that the score was an eight. So the probability of getting a head is one over three. So we've got one over three. And so we're going to multiply. Her score was eight. So when she gets ahead, it says the two numbers from the dice are added together. So we've got sides one, two, three, and four. So the only way to get an eight is to say four plus four. So that means it's going to be the probability of getting a four the first time which there's only one four on the four sides, so it's one over four. And then she got a four the second time, one over four. So when I type that into my calculator, I get an answer of one over 48 for both of my conditions. Then we've got to look at just eight alone. So now the probability of just getting an eight, that means that she could have got the heads and got a score of eight, or she could have also got a tail and got a score of eight because it's just all the possible options for eight. It doesn't have to include the heads, only the top one included the heads. So to get an eight, it means she had the probability of getting heads with a four and a four added together, or she could have got the probability of getting a tail. And when she got tails, she multiplied the numbers together. So those numbers, one, two, three, and four, if we multiply them, the only ones that would give us eight is getting a two and a four. So she could have got tails 
two and four, or she could have got tails and then got a four first and then a two. Because remember, we've got to include all the orders. So those are all our possible options for just getting eight. So we've got probability of getting ahead is one over three, of getting four, is going to be 1 over 4 times 1 over 4. Then the probability of getting tails, if heads is 1 over 3, tails must be 2 over 3. Then getting a 2 is 1 over 4 and a 4 is 1 over 4. And then getting tails again is 2 over 3 and Getting a 4 is 1 over 4, and getting a 2 is 1 over 4. So those are all my possible options. And if I type that whole thing in the calculator, I get 5 over 48. So now I have heads and 8, and I have just 8. So I can put it into my equation up there, and I can say 1 over 48 divided by 5 over 48 to give me my final answer of 1 over 5. So that's how we can see whenever we're going to use prob conditional probability, whenever we have given that in the sentence. So if I look at another example, I've got in a certain town, 35% of the people take a holiday abroad and 65% take a holiday in their own country. Of these going abroad, 80% go to the seaside, 15% go camping, and 5% take a city break. Of those taking a holiday in their own country, 20% of them go to the seaside, and the rest are divided equally between camping and a city break. A person is chosen at random. Given that the person chosen goes camping, find the probability that the person goes abroad. So... I want the probability, find the probability that the person goes abroad. So I can represent that with A. Given that they chose camping. So given that they went camping. So that means I am going to get the probability that the person went abroad and camping divided by just the given that thing. So given that they went camping. So that's the probability of camping. So looking at them separately, the probability of going abroad and camping means if they went abroad, it was 35%. So that means 0 0.35 for going abroad. And of those people going abroad, 15% go camping, so that's 0 0.15. So that gives me 0 0.0525, if I type that in my calculator. And now the probability of just going camping means they could have gone abroad and gone camping, or they could have gone on holiday in their home country and gone camping. So I want the probability of going abroad and camping or, so I add, the probability of staying home and camping. So we've already looked at the probability of going abroad is 0 0.35 and camping was 0 0.15 plus staying home was 0 0.65 and then going camping if they stayed home said that 20% went to the seaside and the rest were divided equally between camping and a city break. So that means there was 80% left divided evenly between two things means there's 40% that went camping. So that is times 0 0.4. And when you type that into your calculator, you get an answer of 0 0.3125. So now I can say my abroad and camping is 0 0.0525 
divided by just camping of 0 0.3125 to give me my final answer of 0 0.168. Okay, so the next example that I have, I have got the probability that the school bus is on time on any particular day is 0 0.6. If the bus is on time, the probability that Sam, the driver, gets a cup of coffee is 0 0.9. If the bus is not on time, the probability that Sam gets a cup of coffee is 0 0.3. Find the probability that Sam gets a cup of coffee. So, we want the probability that he gets coffee, which means it's going to be the probability that he is on time and gets coffee or that he's not on time and gets coffee. So that means it's going to be on time and coffee or not on time and coffee. So the probability that the school bus is on time on any particular day is 0 0.6. And if the bus is on time, when he gets coffee, it's 0 0.9. So that means the probability that he's not on time is 0 0.4. And if it's not on time, the probability that he gets a cup of coffee is 0 0.3. So when we type that in our calculator, we get 0 0.66 as an answer. So now the second part says, given that Sam does not get a cup of coffee, find the probability that the bus is not on time. So I want the probability that the bus is not on time, given that he does not get a cup of coffee. So we've got not on time, given that there's no coffee. So that means it's the probability of not being on time and not having coffee divided by our given that thing, which is given that he does not have a cup of coffee. So it's the probability that he doesn't have coffee. So our probability that he's not on time and doesn't get coffee is 0 0.4 for not being on time times if it's 0 0.3 that he does get a cup of coffee it means not getting coffee is 0 0.7 and then the probability of just not getting coffee is a probability that he's on time and he doesn't get coffee or that he's not on time and doesn't get coffee. But in the first question, we've already worked out the probability that he got a cup of coffee. So if this is the probability of him getting a cup of coffee, him not getting a cup of coffee is just going to be 1 minus where he does get a coffee. So 1 minus 0 0.66. That's a lot quicker than doing a whole long calculation. But you can, you will end up with the same answer in the end. So if we take our 0 0.4 times 0 0.7 over our 1 minus 0 0.66, we end up with a final answer of 0 0.824. Okay, and if we look at one last example as well, I've got a table shown the numbers of males and female members of a vintage car club who either own a Jaguar or a Bentley. And no member owns both makes of cars. One member is chosen at random from these 60 members. And the first thing they ask us is, given that the member is male, find the probability that he owns a Jaguar. So... I want the probability that he owns a Jaguar, given that he is male. 
which means it's the probability of owning a Jaguar and being male divided by just the given that thing, which is given that he's male. So it's the probability of just being male. So now, if I look at my table, I can find uh, owning a Jaguar and being male, there are 25 of them. So I can say that probability is 25 out of the total 60 members. Then that's divided by just being male. So now I can count up how many male members I have of 25 plus 12. Ends up as 37 divided by my total members of 60. And when I put that in a calculator, I get a final answer of 25 over 37. So when we're looking at things like conditional probability, we've just got to remember that we always have the first thing of both together. And then the given that thing is by itself, but it's all the possible options for that given that probability. So don't forget, it's not only looking at that one part of it, it's looking at all possible options just to get that final probability.